to another episode of Glory of Gold in State Gaming. I'm your host, Swamp Swimmer, and with me as always, the Jerry Rice to my Joe Montana, Vespasian. That's a great one. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Rice is my favorite football player of all time. That's great. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> the reason why I used that comparison was because... Um, the NFL season is starting this weekend. Uh, for those of us, uh, oh, those of our viewers not in the United States, that's American football, not uh, European, everywhere else in the world football. Um, but that's starting up, and a big activity here in the United States is fantasy football. And I play in a few leagues, and it's I really enjoy doing it. I love watching football. Um, but I was just thinking, there's a certain percentage of ninth age players who also love watching football as well as playing the ninth age. I'm like. What would be a fun way of combining those two things? And the, the first thought was uh, each week you compete against one person, then you also play them in, in a game of Ninth Age, and that contributes to your score. I don't know. What do you think about that? Um, you know, it's uh, actually just listening to you think about it made me kind of think about the, um, the Fading Flame League. And if you, mm. you know, like, if you picked, if you had your team, like, you'd pick, like, scrub and you know whoever oh. and whatever so you know? you're saying like then, uh like spectators yeah. of the fading flame league would have a fantasy league on the side that's an that's a fun idea yeah a game within a game <laughs> <laughs> it could be cool that would be interesting you pick like how many people are in one in each league the top league and i think it's like 10 12 yeah. people something like that it was like 16 people in seven seven leagues i think um so what, what is that um a little over a hundred um so yeah i mean i think i think that we'd probably struggle with scale uh, unless the teams were much smaller um mm -hmm. but you know if you if you kind of pick you know if, if you did a draft and you picked your you know your your players and you know and armies and stuff like that i mean there there'd need to be some mechanics like you know, kind of like how yards you know is is an element of fantasy in, in addition to touchdowns and mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff um you know like maybe victory points and battle points and objective wins or something like that you could kind of you could you could game it up to be similar i think we probably need something a bit larger scale um but yeah it could be interesting That'd be, that's that's a great idea that's really interesting and also just like it boosts the spec spectator side of it uh, yeah, because people like we have a lot of people who play to love, love to play the game, and love to be in the league. But uh, I think there's a little aspect of um, people who like to jump on UB or Warhol and watch the games live. That's an interesting. That's a really interesting concept. I'm gonna think about that. If you see, so if you if you see like some, when some of the better players are playing like a big match, you know, like I, I mean, you can easily see 50 plus people spectating mm -hmm. on UB. I mean, yeah. could be be doable anyway that's a fun idea i'm really my brain is tinkering but let's jump into the bat rep uh this is round four of uh, socal joust 2021 in in pasadena this is your round four uh we just went over my round four where i got roasted but um you watch you let's jump into the screens here there we go and I was, uh, everybody, I was telling Swamp Simmer before the battle report, I, I'd like, you know, a little bit of a, of a roast of, of this one here because I've, I've gone over this match and, um, and I, you know, could, I could use some, some thoughts and some feedback. So comments, you know, post in the forum, whatever. I'd love, love to hear people's thoughts on this one. Good game. All right. You heard it here, uh, spectators. Give, give Vespasi in your worst in the comments. But, my body uh, is ready. <laughs> <laughs> you got paired into good old Pete Reese from Houston. He was out there in LA. Uh, Pete is a is a well, he's a great player. Um, yeah. And he he won the his... biggest tournament in the U.S. a couple of years ago, right? Buckeye, like a hundred mm -hmm. or 80, 80 or hundred people. Yeah. He wins he wins tournaments pretty consistently every year. But he's playing yeah. his go to, which is dwarves. Which you know, dwarves are dwarves. Uh, and I'll give you... him a quick shout out. He does have a blog on the forum. Um, I think his his handle is Grungy Music, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, it's a good read. He does like fluff and stuff like that. So. Oh, cool. I didn't yeah. know that. I should check that out. 
Uh, if you're interested in Vespasian's list, uh, go back to his round one video. We just we go over this. But let's look at Pete. Uh, it looked like he's running the... Uh, this is as usual. Not as usual, but he, we've, we've seen him run this before. The double Dragon Seeker. One with Ruin of Destruction, one with Ruin of Smashing. So one's like the ultra high strength and one does D3 wounds. Yep. Yep. Um, and the, the one that's ultra high strength does multi wounds too against large and gigantic i think with the monster yes, seeker and monster so. seeker what does grim resolve do again grim resolve is the one where he gets attacks based on the number of models in base space contact so oh, he can routinely okay. get like up to that like eight to ten attacks kind of range something like that so two pretty nasty characters there yeah he's got a thing yeah. who is his general uh double rune of iron and a hand weapon with two runes of lightning a rune of returning and a rune of kinship Engineer with Rune of Denial. Ten Clansmen with handguns. Ten Clansmen with handguns. Ten Clansmen with handguns. Ten Warriors with Thrown Weapons and Vanguard. Ten Warriors with just Thrown Weapons. Twenty-one Seekers. Nine Seekers with Brothers of Vengeance, which means they're skirmished. Ten Miners. Two Steam Copters. An Organ Gun. A Cannon. And a Flame Cannon. Yep. So what? Uh, so dwarf, dwarf MSU with yeah. um with you know a, a heavy seeker theme and uh, a lot of shooting, a lot of shooting. Yeah, a lot of shooting. That artillery is pretty scary. I mean, how? What do you? What are you feeling when you're going into this matchup? Did you give me a little matchup thing? Oh, you did. Here we I go. I think I did. Yeah, I think you know. Um, actually there was a couple things that pete did that i against some of his previous lists that i was happy with so one is he took the double quickening off which is good because it means the spear prince um strikes first before the the dragon seekers so that i actually i liked that change um shooting wise i mean we're both heavy shooting i think that he kind of just barely ekes me out but with as you can see in my description here the buffs and healing i think you know he goes he goes you know zero magic basically so um so i think i kind of edge him out in the long run of battle of attrition of the shooting phase um the seekers you know i've got a lot to kill seekers in this match um mm -hmm. but you know this was a mission that i knew was going to be tough to take that many scoring units um because it's um you know like like I've put spoils here, but it ended up being secure target, and that's a tough one because he can just swarm the, the markers with scoring units. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the ambushing miners with the Thor Thane, you know, that has the the, the rune of lightning thrown hammer, um, is tough for me because he that thing can take you know almost anything in my army except the Sea Guard unit basically, and and um, so that's that that dictates my deployment a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I, th but, you know, I thought this was like a three with some upside, basically, because I think that if I can take down the Seekers early, I can win win the long shooting game and and um, and potentially, you know, be able to come out with like a small win was was my kind of hope there. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling yeah. confident? I I I I'd push this more to a, a yellow, but I guess a three I think, plus. I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's like you know. It's tentative confidence. Three, three with some upside, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see how uh, how this goes. Uh, so this first image is top of one movement. So let's go over deployment first here. Yeah. So, um, so what happened here was Pete, Pete and I dr counter dropped. We had like roughly even amounts of drops, and I was it was really interested to see where he deployed things. So we we went drop for drop, um, quite a bit. Um, it's it is dawn assault. So um, my left is is where I was boxed out of, and his and his left is where he was boxed out of. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so his left. Um, yeah, and ultimately what Pete did, which I thought was interesting, was um, once we started getting into late drops, um, he actually dropped everything to have me go first, um, which I think that's, that's an objective play, basically. Um, you know, he, he wants to be the, be able to swarm the objectives at the end, which works for his list, makes sense. Um, so you can see Pete placed his objective um, in the top right. No, oh, top this right. One. Yeah, yeah. 
And I placed mine right there behind the wall um, because I figured with first turn, you know, my, oh, isn't, I might that, be able isn't to... that backwards? He he can't place it back there. He has to place it on no, your half of the board. With, with Dawn Assault, you have to be out of 12 inches from the deployment zone. So he uh... can, yeah, he can place it there. And I thought, I thought that he might, um, especially with that ambushing unit. Like he has basically an auto, you know, an auto way to take that objective essentially, right? So um, I was, you know, thinking that he might do that. Um, so, so you can see, I mean, this is after my first turn move. So, so um, I moved a couple things out to the left. Um, basically, um, I had the two, the two giants um, kind of, you know, on or behind the hill there, you can see. Um, and then I raced one over there. That's to get out of line of sight of his cannon. Um, yeah. So I've got uh, a giant. Um, let's go over his, yeah, go over your deployment, I'm sorry. Yeah, his, you know, his uh, giant um, reavers, bull thrower, which is towed up on the hill. Um, another giant, the two giants are facing back and that's an anti-ambushing thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, five gray watchers deep um, between the giant and the bull thrower, another bull thrower, sea guard, which has all the characters in it. Um, Lion Guard there by the uh, by the house, uh, Frosty out of line of sight of the cannon and facing backwards for ambushers, and then you can't see them, but there's a um, there's the spear unit over there and one Reaper uh, is okay. is in the kind of bottom right, uh, and then on his side he's got the um, he's got the the Brothers of Vengeance with the Monster Seeker Seeker Lord in there, um, and then. I'll be totally honest with you, like which ones are which is gonna be a little bit tough for me. <laughs> I, I think I think that he's it's guild crafted handgunners, marksmen there. Um behind it is a bomber, um, organ gun, uh, and then I think it's um warrior unit with a marksman unit behind it. Yeah. Marksman unit. Yeah, marksman unit. Uh, the vanguarding warrior unit lined mm -hmm. out like that. Um, to basically to block the seekers, um, seekers with the grim resolve, seeker lord. Um, he's got the cannon in the back there behind them against the board mm -hmm. edge, the flamethrower in the field, and the um, and the other copter right there. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like he's got that this other character in this unit here. See, so there's one guy in the back rank here, and that unit in the back. Oh rank. no. No, the the Thane ambushes with the miners. Uh, the, I mean the the room the engineer. Oh yes, the engineer is back there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um. So it's a um, you know, I think, you know, like I said, we we kind of bounced back and forth quite a bit. So a lot of his army was was already down. But what wasn't down was the war machines. He left those. Uh, until he dropped all, right? So there were several, I guess he must have been waiting for several things to kind of go down before he dropped the war machines. Um, mm -hmm. he, he did a relatively good job of blocking off lines of sight um, with the placement of the war machines. Um, the organ gun obviously kind of takes a, a dominant position over that central secure target. I think he was basically chalking that that back secure target up as his, and so he just wanted to prevent me from getting the middle one, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, he does a little bit of a you know minor push up with the vanguards, um, but but nothing special. I think probably staying out of certain ranges and lines of sight and stuff. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, like I said, you know, jump in. I'd love to love to hear feedback on this one. Um, but I basically my turn one, I race that giant over to get behind that impassable. Um, my main goal there is I'd love to. I like the, the stepping stones of that giant, you know, like he can come up and shelter behind the forest before kind of breaking into the back line in, in the late yeah. game push. Um, so I like that. Um, I liked, you know, he can kind of zone from him bringing the miners over on that side against my backboard edge. Um, same thing with the other giant. Um, and then I, I, I quickly you can see that red dice up in front of my sea guard unit there mm -hmm. that was me marking the organ gun range right and i, yeah, I quickly realized that that an advance there was going to be really really challenging um because i would i would have to take multiple turns of organ gun fire so i was kind of thinking i'd sit off and wait for a late game push on that objective basically was my thinking let my shooting take its toll um and i just kept all the monsters sheltered because i didn't want to lose one early to the cannon um and didn't 
didn't push up too much. I kind of, that flamethrower was doing a good job of keeping the spears off on the right. Um, and uh, because, yeah, I think the lions can handle the flamethrower because of the three up against range, but the spears definitely can't. Um, so that was kind of my thinking there. Um, yeah, I think he's assault. He did a really great job putting, the, first of all, putting the token back there. I, that's, a, that's a nifty thing I didn't think about. But um, then putting the organ gun to guard it basically means you're, that, you're that's really, the flame floor that's i mean the, I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry the, yeah i meant the flame floor that gets like it's guarding that corner against your rank and file guys especially elves like that's really really hurts yeah yeah Whew, i think you got the best setup you can you're you're set up to go for the middle token yeah okay yeah, fair we'll, enough we'll see how it goes uh, let's um see here. This is called out as bottom of uh, bottom of his movement. Yeah. Okay. So let me let me tell you what happens here. So basically, um, I actually I have a good, pretty solid first turn shooting phase. Um, I always get really nervous when that happens because usually that means that the dice gods are going to punish me later on. <laughs> um, but you can kind of see what I did my main work on. I, I really crushed that central. Um, marksman unit, the one of three guys right there in the back. Um, I managed to put a few kind of scattered um, hits into the leftmost marksman unit, mm -hmm. um, like I think two or three. Um, I did take a few wounds off of that dwarf unit, the, the vanguarded one, um, and I also managed to sneak a couple wounds in on the flame throw, the flame cannon, which I was really oh, happy with. Nice. Um, that helps. And that yeah. was that was very lucky because I think that was the bolt thrower on the right that did that. So that was long range through a field and wounding on fours. That's two is a pretty pretty solid outcome there. So um, yeah, was, so he he really he pushed, um, which I think he has to with his with his seekers. Um, and you know i was i was happy to see where he had that seeker block because on the on the left because i've got lots of shooting that can go after that um mm -hmm. and um, my reavers are out of range so I, I i was careful there all my monsters are safe so um i was pretty pretty happy with with how turn one and then into his turn went um i think i think that i only got like I think I got either altered sight or um, or stars align on the um, on the sea guard. Um, he was really focused on stopping the hereditary for obvious reasons because that helps yeah. me win the shootout in a way. Um, and I had kind of a soft magic phase if I recall correctly. So yeah, this was um, this was his his move up. So let's see. I think I've got my top of two movement next, right? This is yep. Uh, top of two movement. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you can see, let me kind of describe what happens with his turn. So you can see he knocks off a couple of lions, nothing nothing too crazy. I'm um, yeah. pretty happy with how that went. Also, um, he put a lot of fire into that bolt thrower on the hill. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I think he, I think he, I want to say either it was that his cannon did those three wounds and then he failed to ping the last wound off or, or something like that but one way or the other he um he didn't get the bolt thrower which which i was really happy with and i think he was relying on getting it because he did open up lines of sight for me to shoot at the cannon um so i was uh i was pretty happy with that um and then this so this was my movement so i move up the reavers um and my yeah, my hope your... and what i was Go ahead. Keep going, yeah. It's like why? Why would you do that? I mean, it, it seemed like before he did. It, from here, he doesn't have a charge anywhere, really. Yeah. So um, this was me, um, and actually, Pete. Pete told me later that um, he didn't. He didn't catch this. So um, I actually, I think, I very easily could have caught him out on this. But this, those reavers are set up for a cover volley from the from the sea guard. Um, mm. And dwarf, I, I know it doesn't look like it, but dwarves have such a short advance rate that I actually could still stand and shoot um, so that was a that was I was hoping that he would just do that to pick up the chaff um, because like you said it, it doesn't really put him in a worse spot he can hit them and then reform up onto the hill uh -huh. um, so I, I was kind of trying to give him something attractive that would give me a free round of shooting on that unit yeah. um, and um, my thinking was that if I got that free round of shooting, I actually might be able to pick out the Seeker Lord in the following turn. So I was kind of hoping to trick Pete here a little bit. Um, and I, I, to kind of create that urgency, I did 
start moving the lions up um, because I wanted him to sort of feel like he needed to get moving on that flank, right? Um, because the lions were going to start to threaten over on the right. So that was that was my thinking there. Um, Are your lions now in in range of the organ gun? Yeah. So this this was definitely a mistake, and they were they were in range of the organ gun, but by like an inch. <laughs> so that when I when I when I realized it at the end of my turn, I was like, "Damn, I, that that was a, a definitely a mistake." They they could have been back an inch. Yeah. Um, but other other than that, I was pretty happy with with this. All the monsters were staying out of staying out of range and everything. Um, and um, yeah, so that was uh, or Mark, and that was uh, that was it there. So yeah, it's pretty solid because like, he didn't do very much work to you in his shooting shooting phase. Yeah, at this point, I was my thinking was if he hits those reavers, and by the way, that the seekers cannot overrun in the bull throw; it's more than twelve. Um, the so my thinking here was like if I get that cover volley into that seeker unit and I take out that seeker lord in my in my following shooting phase, I think this is looking pretty good. So I was I was actually feeling really confident here. Okay. Oh, okay. This is uh, bottom of two. Okay. The, well, things yeah, are different. Yeah. A lot happened. Okay, so um, so a few things. Um, so one, he did not take the bait on the reverse. Um, mm -hmm. He instead he chose to um, he chose to sweep over them with the shrapnel bombs and then shoot and then shoot them, mm -hmm. and just take them off. Right. So um, fair play at. I wish I'd caught him out on that trick. And he actually, like I said, he told me he'd forgotten about that. So I could have very much caught him out, but um, so there was that. Um, and then let me just kind of get back to what I did in my shooting phase. I do pick up a couple of the Brothers of Vengeance um, with my shooting, so that was good. Uh -huh. um, and I do keep doing some work on stuff. I get another wound on the flamethrower you can see over there. Uh -huh. um, and I do have a big, that bull throw on the hill threads the needle and puts it's either three or four Looks like three. wounds on that yeah so i was really happy with that um i continued to do some work on the um on the uh the marksman in the center there i think i'd just peel off a few more basically mm -hmm. um so all in all you know continuing to wear down the war machines starting to take off some seekers and you know his his shooting outside the war machines is pretty depleted. I think he's down to like half the marksman that he started with. So I was feeling have, pretty um, good about that. Have his miners shown up? They have not. And he he did he failed uh, this turn with the miners. Um, he also did something interesting. He he put that copter there. Um, and you know this is uh, oh, sorry the other here. one. Um, yeah, and this is where you know this is where. I think UB wins out over the tabletop. There was a, a little bit of like, you can see it's kind of like balanced up on the back end of my base, you know, mm -hmm. thing and blah, blah, blah. And it was it was one of these things where, you know, the intent was that my lions couldn't do a reform essentially um, because he was with he was an inch away. And so mm -hmm. any reform um, would have taken them within that. And so it, it did constrain my my movement I'll be honest, I think, you know, he's pretty close into that building, you know, I mean, like, I think that it was a little bit like kind of on the edge of whether or not it was possible, but it was also yeah. one of those things that you don't really fight on the tabletop because you don't have the millimeter, you know, camera view to, to look at it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, with you being get a lot was, more precise. Yeah. Yeah, it was a move I did not see. Um, you, you can also see I got off pretty light with the organ gun shooting. He just rolled like absolute garbage with the organ okay. gun, and I think I think between that and the flame cannon, he only did like three or four wounds to the lion. So I, my mistake, Whew, I didn't up, end up paying for. Him. Yeah. But because of that with the gyrocopter, I can't back out of range now. Right, that's what he was going Oof. for. So that was uh, that was kind of a shame. Um, so now this is this is his this was his movement, right? Mm -hmm. Or my movement? I can't. This was his movement. This is bottom of two. Okay, so yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so there you go. Um, so now I think, what do we have next? Because I think, unfortunately, everybody, I think I skip a number of pictures because this is when things started to get hectic. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's see what the next photo is. And this I is saying yeah, okay. top of top, four. Top, top, top. 
going up, up, back. Let me let me tell you what 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 goes on here. Okay, so he's he's chaffed up the lions um, mm -hmm. with that van, vanguarding brick there, and um, he's kind of adjusted the seeker unit. Um, and what I was looking at here was um, because of I, I didn't want to take that charge in my turn into the vanguarding um, dwarves because it really blocks up what he can do with the Seekers against the Lions. Um, mm -hmm. And I also set it up so that I have flea paths over that building if I if I want to with the Lions. Um, and he's a 10 on the dice charge with the Seeker block into my Seaguard unit. And I've also set it up so that obviously I can stand and shoot if he bring, mm -hmm. uh, with the cover volley if he charges the Lions. So my, my hope was that he the lions are too juicy of a target. Charges with the seekers, cover volley, take you know, take off a bunch of them, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That was that was my thinking there. Um, so, anyway, so now we can now we can go ahead to his to his turn. Okay, so this is you said this is my four. That this is you your four. Your four. Okay, so let me let me explain what happens here. Okay, so. Um, Let's go. Let's go left to right. So, um, in, after turn three, um, I decide I need to get the monsters going because um, because what happens? He does do that charge towards the lions. I do flee. I do cover mm -hmm. volley. I, yeah. I peel off like nine seekers. Really happy with that. And then he hits the ten into my seeker. Into right. here, yeah, yeah. And you know that's kind of a bummer but I've got a ton of attacks striking before him, right? And I've got the Spear Lord, right? And so, yeah. you know, and, with, but you're, uh, and, you're basically facing that you're coming with me attacks. Absolutely, I'm gonna take some damage, but yeah. my my thinking was that, you know, he he's he's a bit depleted because I did the, that damage with the cover volley. You know, I think I think I can I can do the work because it's, you know, it's 30, what is it? It's, um. It's like 40 attacks before he swings, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I was I was actually feeling pretty pretty confident there. Um, so what what ends up happening? He he get he comes in and I flub, right? Oh, no. the, the spear the spear prince rolls like three ones to hit, you know, which is which is doom, right? Um, the sea guard just roll like absolute trash, and he. I don't. He doesn't do like amazingly, but he um, he does kill my BSB with the Seeker Lord, Ooh, um, okay. and, and so you know now that was that was in that was in his um, that was in his three, right? Yeah, his three. So now we're now we're on to now we're on to four, and I have to start bringing the monsters out because he's he's stuck essentially. I'm I'm in you know he's he's into my main brick. You know, and he's he's depleting them heavily. I got no BSB left. You know, blah blah blah. So what do, what do I have to do? I bring the monsters out. I use one of the giants to chaff his, mm -hmm. um, his seeker lord over there because I can't have them getting into the flank of the um, of the sea guard. Um, I bring the uh, I bring the frosty out with some you know, and the other giant with some great charges into the center. And I'm happy with that because if I can start picking up those little units. Um, and then break free of that that seeker brick. I can start pushing up, um, and then also on the right, I've got now I've got my lions and my spears that can start pushing up on the side, right? Potentially threatening mm -hmm. the other objective. So, yeah, it's it's a bit of a rough rough situation, but all is not lost essentially. Um, and so, and then in this turn, I I do actually manage to the spear prince does take off the seeker lord, wow, um, which nice. which is great. Um, I got so a bunch static, of So static agility, you're ahead of him. Yeah, correct, yeah. which is important. Um, and so I take, I take him off, um, and we, I, I think, I think that he, I do manage to actually finish off the unit, but at this point, the Sea Guard are in rough shape, right? Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're down to what, like 12 guys, 13 guys? Yeah, and I've lost the BSB, right? Yeah. Um, and so then in his turn, which I don't think I have a picture of, because I think we go into the, the last turn here, um, he charges in on the hill there, picks up the giant. Obviously, he's got a mm -hmm. monster seeker, Lord, and a bunch of seekers. He crushes yeah, that guy. Yeah, the giant has no chance, yeah. 
yeah um and then um the this unfortunately after a number of turns um the the miners come on oh, no. in, in his turn and they come on over on the right and i think actually his arm there that's him putting them down <laughs> okay uh and they they come on and just that there goes my advance basically right i mean it was the right the right use of it um and there goes my advance so he basically they end up holding up and i think killing the spears ultimately and um and hold, and tying up the lions on that side um mm -hmm. which is not a bad trade in points but it does it does really cripple my my move on the objective um and then um and then in his turn he he starts he starts pounding the the giant on the left hand side um i think there, there's one turn where i get lucky and like the cannon misses and the organ gun does super crap and the the giant's doing pretty well so he actually the giant is in is in a good position so let me see where, what's the last picture that we have because i think i've caught you up at oh, this point okay this so that was the last, last one right. yeah. sorry about that this was a very <laughs> very tight game um so so then what ends up happening here ultimately is um, the that seeker lord and and that's remaining um, does get into the 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 sea guard um, who have okay. moved up on the objective. Um, my remaining shooting has managed to deplete or finish off a number of the blocks in the center. Um, and that little three-man block that he's got up at the top there, you remember that marksman unit that I depleted turn one? Yeah. The both throw managed to, to kill the last of them off in a heroic last turn <laughs> shooting them from getting that objective over there. Um, and, and what ends up happening is I've got the Sea Guard with the mage who heroically challenges out the Seeker Lord last turn and dies to save the, the Sea Guard brick. Um, one one sea guard right the, the, i think the standard bearer if i recall correctly um and the and the prince so the prince and that one sea guard guy who does live i make the last roll of the game a five up armor save to save that last sea guard unit and, the, uh, and a bunch of points but unfortunately he does have two i think like like three dwarves from two scoring units holding Next that center, center objective yeah yeah so at the end of the game it's like um it's like his seeker lord like two two of the msu dwarf units are remaining the miners and the thane general mm -hmm. and all of the machines i never managed to get the last wounds off of those war machines that <laughs> i that i damaged early what ended all, up happening got... to the frosty what happened to the frosty so he the frosty had to do a, a you know overrun chaff into the seeker lord in like turn five or six to prevent him from getting in one turn earlier um so and the, and he also takes off with a with a cannon hit in the in the bottom of six takes off the green giant from the left so he he gets he gets off the he gets all the monsters off um and so i've got two gray watchers the lion unit one bolt thrower um the spear lord and one sea guard that's that's what i have remaining and he's got like you know i think a sum total of like 13 dwarves and all three of his <laughs> machines and that's all he's got remaining. <laughs> that's so a, good a game. super wow. super bloody battle yeah yeah uh, and um, really you end good. up with a five, five points cool. yeah so i lost the objective right which was um a, a very close run thing like i said um but i lost the objective um and you know there was a couple of things that um there was a couple of things that i look back the lion move putting him in yeah. range of the organ gun didn't end up costing me a lot but that was that was sloppy play that was a mistake um and i think um, just overall yeah. i think you were you were a little too aggressive in the center when you didn't need to be and yeah he did make a long charge with the seekers into your um sea guard but i don't think you needed to even give them that that chance of yeah. a rolling of 10. Um, yeah i think uh, there wasn't there wasn't a value i i can't like looking at this now i can't see why they needed to be like they could have been back two more inches you mm -hmm. know easily so i don't know and that's yeah. it just would have been yeah it would have been a couple more rounds of shooting maybe another um volley fire another um 
stand and shoot for another unit in there that would have taken out these smaller units. Yeah, I think he, he got lucky with that 10 inch charge, but it, the learning moment is to be pushed up a little aggress too aggressively. Yeah, I just was, what I was worried about, I guess, was I was worried about giving him the room to just push. I mean, like, he's got like four, five scoring units there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if he just, if he just layers them in there, like, it's going to be hard for me to pull him off. And I, I was fairly sure I wasn't going to be able to get the top one, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean... Like you said, I mean, if he doesn't make the 10, um, I think it's a pretty different game because I think yeah. then that, that Seeker Brick disappears the following turn. Um, and then the Sea Guard can kind of handle the center uncontested, basically. Um, yeah, and I think, I think he, yep. he had you on the left. Like, there, you didn't have yep. a whole lot to stop the, the skirmish Seekers with the Lord and the Seeker in there. Um, did you drop the Giants before he dropped that unit i think so i think i i, I knew that the monsters were going to be behind the the impassable basically yeah. so um i think i dropped them both because it was kind of like a given right yeah yeah i was just thinking like the 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 frosty should have been over there because the frosty has a sweeping attack right no 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 that's no. the flame never mind i was thinking you could uh you know, sweep attack those guys and really get them down, but uh, the Frosty doesn't have that. Yeah. Um, I think this was a sneaky worse matchup for you than you thought in the beginning. Yeah. But it was a close game. Fair, I think you that, played it pretty um, close to right. That, yeah. that rating was without the objective, right? So um, that that was that, that was a pre-tournament rating, so I didn't know it was going to be secure target. Um, I think mm -hmm. that kind of shifts it down to like a three minus, maybe. Um, yeah. The other thing I thought about and I um, debated on is, um, you know, I I contemplated putting my objective over, doing the same thing he did over in my left, way over here, and, yeah, and putting my spears over there. Um, but the thing that that prevented me from doing it was that I worried that then he would just use the miners to take it, basically. Um, yeah. You know, that bring them in and then, I mean, they easily out, you know, out out fight the the spears by themselves. Um, I was just thinking, like, because you also had the giants over here, it, and they were facing backwards to face the miners when they came in. That yeah. might have been an idea with the I think the spears with a giant or two. Would yeah. have beaten them. Yeah, I think hindsight and twenty twenty yeah. and the way, yeah. the way it played out, I think that would have been a better play because then I don't have to move up in the center and I just let him come to me, right? Yeah, and then the uh, center just becomes him trying to get to you and you shooting him as much as you possibly can. Yeah, because most of his most like I think all of his infantry were down when I when when like when I when I'd been placing most of my important units, right? So his scoring was would not have been able to get over there, right? So I think that was the other thing that I could have done, could have done better. So being less aggressive in the center and potentially rethinking the objective, basically. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, anyone watching this video, I don't think I was hard enough on Vespasian, so please put some comments in the comments. Uh, everyone, please subscribe. Uh, we're looking for more subscribers. And um, any last words, Vespasian? No, it was a really good game. Thanks, Pete. I look forward to a rematch someday. I think uh, I think it was a really good one. You, you played very well. I appreciate it. And I'll uh, talk soon. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Take care.